Hello and welcome to this week's Key Smash Studios video. On this video, we're going to discuss two different ways that you can set up a dedicated ARC server on your PC. With that in mind, there is an easy way to set this up, and there is a slightly more difficult way to set it up. There's no real wrong answer, it's just whichever you prefer. So the first thing at which we can look to set up a server is to look at the Arc Server Manager. Now this is a third party program designed to help manage some of the difficulties of setting up a dedicated server on a Windows PC. This is a fairly simple program, but I'll show you the ins and outs of it, as well as talk about what you need to do to get it running post installation. In the comments below, I'll put a link to how to download this software. But it is on this website. They have a number of installers, as well as having an extensive form to help people get through some of the troubles of setting up this program. Once you install the program, it'll look something like this when you first open it. It needs to be run as an administrator, and it has several different options. The first thing that you're going to do is create a new server profile. This profile is essentially a version of running the server. Each time you create a profile, you can have a different server, and you can set various things about that server. You can name the profiles to be whatever you want. So I can set up this test server, and I can save that as a potential server. Once you install this Arc Server Manager, you're going to need to install the latest version of the Arc server. And what that looks like is you come over here and you see the current installed version. On Live Arc, it'll say whatever the version of Live Arc is. Um, it's 296.104 at the time of this filming. But if that doesn't match here, we need to come over here to where it says install and click install the latest versions of this. So what this does is it opens up the window that starts updating the server through Steam. This is a Linux based server that Steam uses, so you get a more Linux kernel based installation process, but it's pretty self explanatory. Once you install the server, it finishes the download, and then you can boot up the server. Additionally, Arc Server Manager will let you adjust various things within the server. We'll leave this to run in the background off on the side. You can change the name of your server. So if I want to name this Key Smash, you can change your password. You can set an admin password, and you can even set a spectator password if you're doing a PvP type server. Two of the most important things you'll do while setting up a server is to look at the server port and the query port. These are the way your Arc server is found. You can select your local IP there. I'm not going to show it because I don't really want to show my local IP. These two ports are extremely important and we'll get to them a little bit more when we talk about port forwarding but these are the standard server ports that you can set up within Arc. One talks to the server and, and accepts data from incoming players and the other one talks to the listing server so that players know how to join your server. It's worth noting that your query port cannot be 27020 or 27050 as those are both query ports that Steam itself uses. Further down, we can set our map. Here, we can set the path of the name of the map. So if I want a Ragnarok server, I can set a Ragnarok server here. Down here, we need to input our mod IDs if we want to have any mods. It's worth noting that if you are running 
a mod that is a map, that map needs to come first in the list. And oftentimes some mods will have priority over other mods, so they need to be loaded first. You will need to check with each mod page to see what order is necessary. As you scroll down, there are several different options. Most of these are pretty tame and server-based ones that you don't really need to mess with. But some of the most handy things that you can do is set up a server management setting. So having the server start when your computer boots, restarting the server at a certain time, updating and having an auto backup cycle. Additionally, you can change rules on your server. PvP, hardcore, and so on and so forth. You can adjust the settings of some of the difficulty of ARC by scrolling down to the player settings and the dino settings. If you want to earn XP at an exponential rate, you simply come here, hover over it, and it will tell you which way to go. Oftentimes, it's not intuitive. You might think that taking damage would reduce the amount of damage that a player takes, or increase the amount of damage that a player takes. You just need to hover over, and it'll tell you exactly what it does. In this case, lowering it decreases the amount of damage that players do. We can do many of the same settings on the dinos. We can allow flyers in caves, allow flying stamina recovery while floating in midair, they even have things for PvP, like the C4 attached to the Pterodon. Additionally, you can disable some creatures. This scroll list here will let you disable or enable different animals on different maps. So if you really don't like the anglerfish and you don't want it, you can stop it from spawning. If you're tired of people taming an Allosaurus, you can make it untamable. These per stat multipliers are weird and can hurt your server by a great magnitude. However, they can be useful. If you want wild dinosaurs to be stronger than tame dinosaurs or vice versa, this is the location where you would do that. These scale the stats, higher being a multiplicative scale, lower being a division. In environment, we can adjust some of the taming speeds and the resource spawns multipliers. This is a common place where people will come to set up some settings. It looks like our server is finished, so we'll go all the way back up to the top so we can have a look and see what we need to do. So now that our update is finished, we need to come up here and hit save. This saves the server as well as the parameters that you dictate down here. Now that we have saved our server, it's actually pretty simple. We hit start, and there's a pretty significant delay. The first time you boot up a server, this is standard text, but it can take a good amount of time depending on your computer. It's worth noting that Arc is a pretty memory intensive game, and it follows that the server itself is fairly memory intensive. This is our first line of text. Primal game data took 26 seconds to load. That's the first of two messages that we'll get. After the second one loads, there's the second message. Arc has loaded. Our server has started. We have a number of cores. The full startup took 53 seconds and it's running but people will not be able to connect to it until we port forward. After I go over the second method, I will discuss port forwarding. So the first thing we're going to do if we're going to run this via Steam CMD is we're going to open up our command prompt 
and navigate to the location where Steam CMD is installed. So in my case, that's this location. For you, it's just going to be wherever you installed it. Once we're there, we're going to run the executable Steam CMD. It's going to check for an update. And then we're going to log in anonymously. Once we've done that, we just need to install the application for Arc's dedicated server. So app underscore update 376030. And it starts the install. If you want, after that, app underscore update 376030, you can throw a validate. I'm not actually going to be running it, so I don't particularly care whether or not it's perfect or not. So I just did a update of the app. As you can see, much like before with our other method, we still have the Linux kernel download progress bar. Pretty standard for Steam CMD, and in fact, the Arc Server Manager uses Steam CMD just without you having to do it manually. Once it's finished installing, we just need to exit the Steam CMD. We just need to exit the Steam CMD. We can close out command prompt. And we need to navigate to the location of our Steam CMD folder. Once we're in there, we go into our Steam apps common. And here we have the dedicated server. Once we're in the dedicated server, we just go into the shooter game, binaries, Win64, and here's our shooter game server. So if we want to start our shooter game server, our Arc Survival Evolved, we can just simply launch our dedicated server. This will launch it completely vanilla on the island. Much like before, this takes a while. I'm not going to actually sit through it, but it will eventually load the primal data and then do a full boot up. Boot up. If we want to, we can edit some of the configurations for the server startup. So I have created here. A server start batch file you really only create this in a text editor um, but we can edit it in notepad and all it is is just a way to show you guys that you can create this type of file it has a standard naming procedure concatenation and text method and what I mean by that is Following a question mark, there is a command with a variable. That's always true. So if I want to override the official difficulty to 5.0, I can go back into my server start, paste that, and I can save it. Then all you need to do is go back and run your batch file. And that's it. That starts it the exact same way as a vanilla boot up from running the shooter game server. Or when we run the Arc server manager. So with that in mind, there's one last important thing to note. And that is port forwarding. Now, port forwarding is a difficult and tedious task. But in the case of Arc, there's really just two ports that you need to forward. If you're using this, the forwarding manager, it's whatever ports are here and here. One is TCP, one is UDP. Um, and every router is going to be different. But the standard procedure is you're going to go into your web browser, log into your router, and then 
allow whatever your computer's local IP address is to be the first to accept information from those ports. Now every router is going to be different, but if you go to portforward.com, it's a great website and great tool to know how to set up each router. Now I'm not recommending that you use their network utilities by any stretch of the imagination, but they do have guides for every game and every router that you need to install. I actually don't think Arc is on here, but it doesn't really matter. You can just look up your router and figure out how to add a port to your computer. Each router is going to be different, so I can't possibly do a guide on every router. But essentially, if you were to go to a router, yeah, you know, we don't want you, their adware, but if we had this particular router, we go to our router address bar in our computer, log in, and we're port filtering for this port range of TCP or UDP. But on ARC, this is your UDP. This is your TCP. If you're confused at all, it doesn't hurt you to forward both of them. You can UDP 2715 and UDP 4380 and TCP 4380 and TCP 2715. These are just the standard ones. You can change them away from that. You can put them to whatever you want, just as long as port forwarding is set up on your router to allow your local computer to be the first to receive information on any information coming over those ports. And as long as it matches up here or in your batch file, your server will be discoverable on the art game and you'll be able to connect to it and play with it with your friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. If you like this video, like, comment, subscribe, all that jazz. If you have any questions, please let me know. Put it in the comments below. I'll be happy to help. I hope this video was informative. If there's interest, I'll do this for a Linux machine or any other game. Just let me know below. Hopefully we'll see you next week. Thank you.